the philosophy of religion by georg wilhelm friedrich hegel excerpt this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. the philosophy of religion by georg wilhelm friedrich hegel excerpt Hegel's Philosophy of Religion was published the year following the philosopher's death at Berlin, in 1832, and the rugged shape and uneven construction of some of it may fairly be attributed to the fact that, as it stands, it is largely an editorial compilation. Such faults, however, as Dr. Edward Caird has remarked, if they take from the lectures as expressions of their author's mind, and from their value as scientific treatises have some compensating advantages if we regard them as a means of education in philosophy for in this point of view their very artlessness gives them something of the same stimulating suggestive power which is attained by the consummate art of the platonic dialogues the importance of the work is evidenced by the influence it has exercised over the mind of a later generation and many readers to whom hegel is little more than a name will certainly find here the sources of much that has become familiar as an essential part of the religious atmosphere of a later day and of the apologies of modern speculative theology one the relation of philosophy to religion the object of religion is the same as that of philosophy it is the external verity itself in its objective existence it is god nothing but god and the unfolding of god philosophy is not the wisdom of the world but the knowledge of things which are not of this world it is not the knowledge of external mass of empirical life and existence but of the eternal of the nature of god and of all which flows from his nature for this nature ought to manifest and develop itself consequently philosophy in unfolding religion merely unfolds itself and in unfolding itself it unfolds religion in so far as philosophy is occupied with the eternal truth the truth which is in and for itself in so far as it is occupied with this as thinking spirit rather than in an arbitrary fashion and in view of a particular interest philosophy has the same sphere of activity as has religion and if the religious consciousness aspires to abolish all that is peculiar to itself and to be absorbed in its object the philosophic spirit likewise plunges with the same energy into its object and renounces all particularity religion and philosophy are thus at one in having one and the same object philosophy in fact also is the adoration of god it is religion for seeing that god is its object it involves the same renunciation of every opinion and every thought that is arbitrary and subjective philosophy is in consequence identical with religion only it is religion in a peculiar manner and this it is which distinguishes it from religion commonly so called so philosophy and religion are both religion and that which distinguishes one from the other is no more than the characteristic mode in which respectively they consider their object god here is the difficulty of understanding how philosophy can make but one with religion a difficulty which has even been mistaken for impossibility thence also arises the fears which philosophy inspires in theology and the hostile attitudes which they assume towards each other what brings about this attitude is on the side of theology that for her philosophy does nothing but corrupt pull down and profane the content of religion and that she understands god in a totally different manner from that after which religion understands him it is the same opposition which long ago among the greeks caused a free and democratic people like the athenians to burn books and to condemn socrates 
in our own day however this opposition is considered a thing which is natural to admit more natural indeed than the other opinion concerning the unity of religion and philosophy diverse religions offer us it is true only too often the most bizarre and monstrous representations of the divine essence but we must not confine ourselves to a superficial consideration and consequent rejection of these representations and the religious practices which follow upon them as being engendered by superstition by air or by imposture or even by a simple piety and so neglect their essential value there is a need to discover in these representations and in these practices their relation with truth two god the universal for us who have religion god is a familiar being a substantial truth existing in our subjective consciousness but scientifically considered god is a general and abstract term the philosophy of religion it is which develops and grasps the divine nature and which teaches us what god is god is a familiar idea but an idea which has still to be scientifically developed the result of philosophic examination is that god is the absolute truth the universal in and for itself embracing all things and in which all things subsist and in regard to this assertion we may appeal in the first place to the religious consciousness and to its conviction that god is the absolute truth whence all things proceed whither they all return upon which all things depend and in respect of which nothing can possess a true and absolute independence the heart may very well be full of this representation of god but science is not built up of what is in the heart the object of science is that which has arisen to the level of consciousness and of thinking consciousness that is in other words that which has attained to the form of thought in so much as he is the universal god is for us in relation to development being enclosed in itself being at unity with itself being capitalized when we say god is being enclosed in itself we enunciate a proposition which is bound to a development which we await but this envelopment of god in himself which we have called his universality we must not conceive relatively to god himself and his content as an abstract universality outside of which and as opposed to which the particular has an independent existence so we must consider this universal as an absolute concrete universal this sense of fullness is the sense in which god is one and there is but one god that is to say god is not one merely by contrast with other gods but because it is he that is the one that is god the things which are the developments of the worlds of nature and of mind show a multiplicity of forms and an infinite variety of existences but whatever may be their difference of degree of force of content these things have no true independence their being is consequent and so to speak contingent when we predicate being of particular things it is not of being capitalized which is absolute that we speak being capitalized of and from itself that is god but a borrowed being a semblance of being god in his universality that is this universal being which has no limit no bounds no particularity is a being which subsists absolutely and which subsists alone all else which subsists has its root in this unity and by this alone subsists in thus representing to ourselves this first content we may say that god is absolute substance the only veritable reality for not everything which has a reality has a reality of its own or subsists by itself god is the only absolute reality and thereby the absolute substance 
if we stop at this abstract thought we have spinozism for in spinozism subjectivity is not yet differentiated from substantiality from substance as such but in the presupposition just made there is also this thought god is spirit absolute and eternal spirit which comes not forth from itself in differentiation this ideality this subjectivity of spirit which is transparency ideality excluding all particular determination is precisely the universal pure relation to self being capitalized which remains absolutely within itself if we halt at substance we fail to grasp this universal under its concrete form in its concrete determination spirit always preserves its unity this unity of its reality which we call substance but one should add that this substantiality the unity of the absolute reality with itself is but the foundation but a moment in the determination of god as spirit hence principally arises the reproach which is directed against philosophy to wit that philosophy to be consistent with itself is necessarily spinozism and consequently atheism and fatalism but at the beginning we have not yet determinations distinguished one from another as i and nay we have the one but not the other consequently what we have here is to start with content under the form of substance even when we say god spirit we have only words indeterminate representations the essential point is to know what has been produced in the consciousness and that is first the simple the abstract here in this first simple determination we have god only under the form of universality only we do not halt at this moment nevertheless this content remains the foundation of all further developments for in these developments god comes forth from his unity when god creates the world to use the expression of every day there comes not into existence an evil a contrary existing in itself independently of god three god exists for thought this beginning with a capital b is an object for us or a content in us we possess this object immediately the question arises who are we we i spirit here also is a complex being a multiplied being i have perceptions i see i hear etc seeing hearing all this is i consequently the precise sense of this question is which among these determinations is it in accordance with which this content exists for our minds idea will imagination feeling which is the seat the proper domain of this content of this object if we accept the common answers to this question god will abide in us as the object of faith of feeling of representation of knowledge we shall have to examine more closely later on in a special fashion with respect to this point these forms faculties aspects of ourselves in this place we shall not seek to reply to this question nor shall we say basing our answer on experience and observation that god is in our feeling etc but to begin with we will confine ourselves to what we have actually before us to this one with a capital o to this universal to this concrete being with a capital b if we take this one and ask for what power for what activity of our mind does this one this absolutely universal being exist we cannot but name the one activity of mind which corresponds to it as constituting its proper natural domain this activity which corresponds to the universal is thought thought is the field in which this content moves it is the energizing of the universal or the universal in the reality of its activity or if we say that thought embraces the universal 
that for which the universal is will still be thought this universal which can be produced by thought and which is for thought may be a quite abstract universal in this sense it is the unlimited the infinite the being without bounds without particular determination this universal negative to begin with has its seat not elsewhere but in thought to think of god is to rise above the things of sense exterior and individual above simple feeling into the region of pure being being at unity with itself that is to say into the pure region of the universal and this region is thought such is the substratum for this content considered on the subjective side here the content is that being with a capital b in which is no difference no schism being which abides in itself the universal and thought is the form for which this universal is thus we have a difference between thought and the universal which we have called god it is a difference which in the first place belongs only to our reflection and is by no means to be found in the content on its own account there is the result to which philosophy comes a result already comprised in religion as under the form of faith to wit that god is the sole veritable reality the being with a capital b without which no other reality would exist in the unity of this reality in this cloudless shining the reality and the distinction which we call thinking being have as yet no place what we have before us is this absolute unity this content this determination we cannot yet call religion because to religion belongs subjective spirit consciousness thought is the seat of this universal but this seat is to begin with absorbed in this being which is one eternal in and for itself this universal constitutes the beginning and the point of departure but only as unity which so abides it is not a mere substratum whence differences are born rather all differences are included in this universal no more is it an abstract an inert universal but the absolute principle of all activity the matrix the infinite source whence all things proceed whither all things return and in which they are eternally preserved thus the universal is never separated from this ethereal element from this unity with the capital u with itself this concentration within itself four what is evil as the universal god could not find himself faced by a contrary whereof the reality should pretend to arise above the phantasmal level for this pure unity and this perfect transparency matter is nothing impenetrable and spirit the ego is not so independent as to possess a true individual substantiality of its own there has been a tendency to label this idea pantheism it would be more exact to call it the conception of substantiality god is first determined as substance only the absolute subject spirit is also substance but it is determined rather as subject this is the difference generally ignored by those who assert that speculative philosophy is pantheism as usual they miss the essential point and disparage philosophy by falsifying it pantheism is commonly taken to mean that god is all things the whole the universe the collection of all existences of things infinite and infinitely diverse from which notion the charge is brought against philosophy that it teaches that all things are god that is to say that god is not the universal which is in and for itself but the infinite multiplicity of individual things in their empirical and immediate existence if you say god is all that is here this paper etc you have indeed committed yourself to the pantheism with which philosophy is reproached that is the whole is understood as equivalent to all individual things 
but there is also the genus which is equally the universal yet is wholly different from this totality in which the universal is but the collection of individual things and the basis the content is constituted by these things themselves to say that there has ever been a religion which has taught this pantheism is to say what is absolutely untrue it has never entered any man's mind that everything is god that is to say that god is things in their individual and contingent existence far less has philosophy ever taught this doctrine spinozism itself as such as well as oriental pantheism contains this doctrine that the divine in all things is no more than that which is universal in their content their essence and in such sense that this essence is conceived of as a determinate essence when brahma says in the metal i am the brightness of its shining among the rivers i am the ganges i am the life of all that lives he thereby expresses the individual he says not i am the metal the rivers the individual things of various kinds as such nor in the fashion of their immediate existence here at this stage what is expressed is no longer pantheism but rather that of the essence of individual things in the living being are time and space but in this individual being it is only the changeless element that is made to stand out quote, the life of being that lives end quote, is in this latter sphere of life the unlimited the universal but if it be said quote, god is all things end quote, here we understand individuality with all its limitations its finity its passing existence this notion of pantheism arises out of the conception of unity not as spiritual unity but abstract unity and then when the idea takes its religious form where only the substance the one o is capitalized is possessed of true reality there is a tendency to forget that it is precisely in presence of this unity that individual and finite things are effaced and to continue to place these in a material fashion side by side with this unity they will not admit the teaching of the Eleatics, who when they say there is only one with a capital o add expressly that non-entity is not all that is finite would be limitation a negation of the one but non-entity the boundary term limit and that which is limited exist not at all spinozism has been accused of atheism but spinozism does not teach that god is the world that he is all things all things italicized things have indeed a phenomenal existence that is an existence as appearances we speak of our existence and our life is indeed comprised in this existence but to speak philosophically the world has no reality it has no existence individual things are finite things to which no reality can be attributed it may be said of them that they have no existence Spinozism this is the accusation directed against it involves by way of consequence that if all things make but one good and evil make but one there is no difference between them and thereby all religion is destroyed in themselves it is said there is no difference between good and evil consequently it is a matter of indifference whether one be righteous or wicked it may be granted that in themselves that is in god who is the sole veritable reality the difference between good and evil disappears in god there is no evil but the difference between good and evil can exist only on condition that god is the evil but it cannot be allowed that evil is an affirmative thing and that this affirmation is in god god is good and nothing else than good 
the distinction between good and evil is not present in this unity in this substance and comes into existence only with differentiation god is unity abiding absolutely in itself in the substance there is no differentiation the distinction of good and evil begins with the distinction of god from the world and particularly from man it is the fundamental principle of spinozism with regard to this distinction of god and the world that man must have no other end than god the love of god therefore it is that spinoza marks out for man as the law to be followed in order to bring about the healing of this breach and it is the loftiest morality that teaches that evil has no existence and that man is not bound to permit the substantial existence of this distinction this negation yet it is possible for him to desire to maintain the difference and even to push it to the point of sheer opposition to god who is the universal self-contained and self-sufficing in this case man is evil but alternatively he may annul this distinction and place his true existence in god alone and in his aspiration towards him and in this case he is good in spinozism there is indeed the difference between good and evil opposition between god and man but side by side with it we have also the principle that evil is to be deemed a non-entity in god as god in god as substance there is no distinction it is for man that the distinction exists as also for him exists the distinction of good and evil five the determination of unity the superficial method of appraising philosophy is exemplified also in those who assert that it is a system of identity it is perfectly true that substance is this unity at one with itself but spirit no less is this self-identity ultimately all is identity unity with itself but when they speak of the philosophy of identity they have in view abstract identity or unity in general and they neglect the essential point to wit the determination of this unity in itself in other words they omit to consider whether this unity is determined as substance or as spirit philosophy from beginning to end is nothing else than the study of determinations of unity in the sphere of the notion with a capital n many unities are comprised the combination of water and earth is a unity but this unity is mixture if we bring together a base and an acid we have as the result a crystal also water but water which cannot be discerned and which gives no trace of humidity hence the unity of the water and of this matter is a unity different from the mixture of water and earth the essential point is the difference of these determinations the unity of god is always unity but what is of primary importance is to know the modes and forms of the determination of this unity manifestation development determination do not go on to infinity nor yet do they stop accidentally but in the course of its true development the notion with a capital n completes its course by a return upon itself whereby it has attained the reality adequate to it so it is that the manifestation is infinite in nature that the content is adequate to the notion of spirit and that the phenomenal world exists like spirit in and for itself in religion the notion of religion has become its own object spirit which is in and for itself has now no longer in its development individual forms and determinations it knows itself no longer as spirit in such determinability or such a limited moment but it has triumphed over these limitations and this finiteness and is for itself that which also it is in itself this cognizance in which spirit is for itself what it is in itself constitutes the in and for of spirit which is in possession of knowledge the perfect and absolute religion in which is revealed what spirit is 
what God is. That is the Christian religion. End of the Philosophy of Religion by Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel Excerpt